Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. This is part six of my Big Button Form series. If you haven't watched parts one through five yet, go watch those first, then come on back. All right, we're getting there. We're getting close to the wire here. Um, the problem we have next is what if the user wants to cancel, right? They pick this and they pick uh, GMC and then they're like, oh, never mind. If they close this, it's still got that temp var with the button return ID in it. And so it's just gonna just use that and then return an invalid value. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna control whether or not the user can cancel that because right now they can just close the form. We wanna prevent them from doing that and give them their own cancel button that we control, right? I don't like using any of the form close events. They just, they don't, they're all weird. Um, so let's go into our button and I'll copy one of these guys, copy paste. Is it possible to resize this form to fit the number of buttons? Yeah, it's possible. And like I said, it requires some math and some, you know, calculations of where stuff is, but it can be done. I've done it before. I think I, got, I, think I even have videos on how to do it. But um, if you guys want to see how to do that, let me know. If enough people say, yeah, I'll make another video about it. We'll make this the cancel button. So put in here, cancel. And yeah, you can bold it if you want to, whatever. Um, over here on the other tab, Let's set the cancel property to yes. That way when the user hits escape, it pushes that button. That's what that does. Let's make the name cancel. Oh, hang on. I was over there. Over here. Cancel button BTN. And it will have inherited this button clicked because I copied it from one of the other buttons. That's fine. Let's just set its tag. Where are you? Let's set its tag equal to zero. So this button will always return a zero to whoever called it. That way we'll just say, if the return value is zero, you're done, exit sub, right? Save that, close it, come into here now, right click, build event, and now in here, we'll just look at the return value and we'll say, if v make id equals zero, then exit sub. And that's the easiest way to handle that, right? If the user hits cancel, you're done copy oh and i forgot one more thing in the form put it there and put it here uh one more thing i forgot about that form let's go back to the button form right click design view we have to turn off the where are you you guys know what i'm talking about right the control box and the close button the only way to get out of here is to click our button oh and oh yeah no never mind the function handles that I, I've done, what, four of these in a row today, folks, so I'm, I'm getting a little, uh, you know, I don't know. Okay, so <laughs> save it, close it, close it. Needless to say, this will be the last one for today. Um, all right, so customer form, click the button. Let's go Jeep, and then, oh, wait a minute. It's not visible. We didn't make it visible, did we? All right, so we can, because we're the developer, we can right-click design view. And see, this is one of the problems I have. Right-click design view, and it, see, it, it just behaves weird. Make sure you set this guy so it's always visible. Visible, yes, there we go. I knew I forgot a step. See, I told you I'm getting tired. All right, here we go, ready? Select vehicle, and there's our cancel. We can just cancel right away. It sends back a zero and nothing's put in there. Go to a different customer, for example, click. Chevy, uh, none of the, all right, cancel. And then it does, oh, wait a minute. No current record, what happened? We got something, oh, 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 oh. yeah, 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 okay. I, I know what I did. Close this, go back to the button code, and where are we at? Oh, this is the button code. Go back to the customer form. And can anybody see the mistake that I made? Let me make this a little bit bigger. And if you take a look at it right now, can you see the goof that I made? I, I see it immediately because I got that error message before and I know exactly what I did. Pause the video and see if you could figure out what the problem is. I'll give you a hint. The cancel worked if I clicked it on the first Form. If I clicked it when I was picking the make, it worked, but it didn't work for model and year. Do you see it? Pause the video, figure it out. All right, you ready for the answer? This, this happens a lot when you copy and paste stuff. All right, this works, so I copied it, pasted it, pasted it, but I forgot to change the variable name. So this is looking at make ID up here. So we just got to do this. Copy, paste, copy, paste. Now it should work. Debug compile, come back over here, hit the button, Jeep, cancel, and it works. 
All right, that was my fault. But that's a good learning lesson. I do that a lot, folks. I copy some stuff. I copy a block of code, forget to change all the variables. Oh, I didn't work the first time, but now it's not working. Oh, yeah. And that's another reason why I don't like um, copying blocks of code, like the code in here. I don't like this, right? I don't like having this basically the same thing three times in a row. And what we're going to do in the extended cut for the members, this is my prototype database, the one I built before I recorded. And what we're going to do in here is we're going to make a function out of it. Just like this, we're going to make a function called open big button form. So we don't have a lot of repeated code. Open big button form is going to handle all that. It's going to take parameters, right? So we'll send parameters in the record source, the ID field name, the text button name, the where condition, the colors we will add different colors. All right. So when we get to that, what you can do is you'll see it work like this, right? There's that models green, yours is purple. See, we're gonna do that in the extended cut. We're not there yet though. We still got a couple more things to do. Let's handle the no data error that we ran into earlier. Remember what I did when I went to the make table and I put BMW in there, but there's no BMW models in here. There's no 20 models, right? So if I go in here and hit BMW, we get this message. Okay, how do we fix that? Well, we could use error handling, like an on error go to or whatever. That, that's kind of cheesy for this because there's a proper way to do it. Um, we could use a D count or a D lookup and make sure there's records, right? But the proper way to do it is just to see if when you open the record set, if you are immediately at the end of file, that's the best way to do it. All right, so before we even check the number of records, we're gonna make sure there are records, right? Make sure there are records. So we're going to say if rs.eof, end of file, then message box, error, no records found. And then uh, we'll do our force exit equals true. Else, now we can do this whole block because we still got to close everything up, right? We've opened a record set, so tab that in and then throw another end if down here. This is why tabbing is important, folks. Tabbing your indentation is, is important. That way you can click here and look and see what you're directly under. All right. I, I see a lot of people sending me emails and posting stuff in my forums that they share a sample of their code. And just because they didn't indent right, they can't tell that this isn't under that. You know what I'm saying? I know it's stylistic. Uh, Access VB doesn't care about your indentations at all. Just like it doesn't care about your comments. This is all for you and it makes your code more readable. Another thing we want to do while we're in here is if we are force exiting, we want to also return that zero value, right? So we're going to say temp vars, uh, what was it? Button return ID equals zero. If a force exit is needed, return that cancel. Okay, save it. I move this up so you can see more code. Debug compile, come back out, meow. close it, close it, open her up and pick BMW. No records found, and we're done. Come in here, pick forward, pick cancel, and we're done. Okay, that's basically it. Uh, you have a working database now, and if you're a gold member, you can grab a copy of this. Um, that's that's all you need, right? That's it's functional. It works. It covers pretty much all the errors I can think of. Now, in the extended cut, we're going to cover a lot more. We're going to work on colors. We're going to make them pretty. Okay. And more importantly, we're going to build a custom function. We're going to build a function called open big button form. This way, when you go to use this in the future, you don't have to worry about setting temp bars and this and that. All you got to do is know the parameters, right? Here they are right here. Open big button form, right? I can click in here, right? I, I send it the table. I send it the ID. I send it the, the caption name, wherever you want the caption of the button to be right? The where condition. And if you click in here, you'll see what the, the things are, right? The where condition, the form caption, or we parameterized it all, right? There's the, the, the title up top. Here's your colors, right? The form caption colors and all that. That's a green one. That's a purple one. To make another button after that, you just literally just copy this and just change those values. You don't got to set temp fires. You don't got to worry about all that stuff, right? It makes it nice and easy for everybody to use. And by everybody, I mean you, because <laughs> this is a developer tool, right? This is to make your job easier the next time you want to go make a big button form thing, 
right? You want to add engine down here or something else? Okay, so this is covered in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. There's lots of them. There's hundreds of them, folks. So it's well worth your membership. And gold members can access the code vault where a lot of my cool functions are found. And you get to download these videos that I build in the tech help. And everybody gets free classes, all the members. You get a free class once a month. So check it out on my website. You'll find links to all this down below. Click that blue join button today if you want to become a member. But that's going to do it for now, folks. That's the end of this series for now. I got a feeling that I'm going to get a lot of emails and, and suggestions on the website forums for people that want to see some additional stuff. I actually put together a list of possible more stuffs that we could add to this. And if we do, I'll either make another video or I'll put together a template for it. But lots of stuff like, like pagination of the buttons, multi-select options. There's all kinds of stuff we could do with this. This is just some of the stuff I came up with and a few suggestions that were sent in to me. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. So will, will there be a part seven? Eh, maybe, possibly. I won't discount it. If so, I'll put a link down below. Make sure you're on my mailing list so you get my daily updates whenever I release new videos and you'll find out for sure. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this series. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsor, Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions. They're manufacturing experts specializing in Microsoft Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. Check him out at accessexperts.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, 
I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.